Hey, how's it going guys? Ryan here, doing some SmackDown coverage. I thought this week's SmackDown was a pretty darn good show, and I'm just going to highlight a few of the things that I really enjoyed this week. So the first thing that I wanted to jump into is, of course, The Miz. So we all know what happened last week on Talking Smack, where uh, Daniel Bryan really just set off The Miz. Um, he When he called him a coward in the ring... That just, you know, The Miz just blew a gasket, went off, and it was really just a spark in The Miz that I think we've been waiting to see for a very long time. So I liked that they opened the show with The Miz coming out, doing his promo. Uh, you know, earlier they alluded to Daniel Bryan just kind of keeping out of things from now on. Um, so they, they made this more about The Miz and not about The Miz and Daniel Bryan because we... You know, I'm assuming they don't want to tease a match that can't possibly happen. We know Daniel Bryan can't come back and in, in wrestle in the ring anymore, so there's no sense in fueling that fire. That that kind of needs to be passed on to somebody else. Somebody else that can really benefit from it. And, it, you know, I thought the Mrs. Promo was great. And then uh, Dolph Ziggler comes out. So... You know, I thought Ziggler's promo was fine. It's just, it, it brings you to that, ah, uh, we can't care. I mean, it's hard to care about Dolph Ziggler again because he failed. He failed that WWE championship run, and I feel like that was the last time you could really capitalize on Ziggler. And now that he's lost, he's he's still that loser status. They had really one chance left to bring him out of it. And that didn't happen. And now he's right back down to intercontinental title level, feuding against The Miz. You know, we, we've seen these guys fight before, so it, it, it's really nothing new. And that that's kind of the unfortunate thing is The Miz is kind of going in with a ton of momentum now after last week. And as great as the promos can be and the matches will be, it's really tough to care because this, because we've just been burned too many times with Dolph Ziggler. So uh, yeah, that's really just kind of the disappointment there. Um, I'm sure they're still going to have a great match and a great feud. And The Miz is probably still going to win. And he probably should win. Um, if Dolph Ziggler, I feel like the next title he needs to win has to be a world title. Because uh, no one's going to care if he wins his 8th, ninth, 10th. I don't even know how many he's had mid-card title. I think we're we've just been there, done that with Ziggler, and yeah, it's it's tough to stay invested. I don't really know how much more I can honestly say about that. But one guy I'd really like to talk about is Heath Slater. This guy, I mean, we've we've stressed enough on the podcast. He's one of the biggest MVPs coming out of the draft. You know, he comes out, he doesn't get drafted. He starts out as this joke. And he's not being able to get signed to either Raw or SmackDown. And now he's really getting some stability. This fuse, uh, this story of Heath Slater starting to really gain some legs with uh, now that he's teaming with Rhino. And uh, that their interaction is really kind of, it, it's taking off. I loved that they did this segment where Renee Young visits his trailer. You see uh, his wife, who I, I assume is not actually his wife. And Rhino's hanging out with him. They're eating... Uh, Rhino's eating the cheese and crackers, the cheese whiz, and he's just kind of, he makes a frowny face and stuff on it. I thought it was hilarious. Um, most of the segment I didn't think was comedy gold. Rhino was really the funniest part. Excuse me. And um, even though it wasn't, like, the funniest thing in the world, I really, really appreciate it. I love any time that they step outside of the ring in the backstage. Stuff that we see every single episode. But this is really nice, just character development for Heath Slater. You know, just to show, you know, he's a family man, he, his lifestyle... It, you know, he's kind of got that redneck lifestyle or whatever. But there's really a charm to Heath Slater that you kind of love. And he's he's becoming a more sympathetic character, a more lovable character. Um, he continued to, him and Rhino continued to, to uh, develop their kind of relationship on Talking Smack. Which I, I tuned in last week to Talking Smack, obviously, to see the Daniel Bryan Miz thing. It was the first time I ever watched it. 
and I went and watched the whole thing, loved it. So I'm going to be tuning into talk, even if I miss SmackDown, I'm going to be tuning into Talking Smack every single week because I really love the format. Daniel Bryan and Renee Young, they, they find this perfect middle ground of kayfabe and reality and, and they mix it so well and it's just, it's really enjoyable to watch because you get the storyline mixed with learning more about their guests and who they really are. Um, so Heath Slater did an excellent job of that. Where I want to see him go is I want he has to win this tournament with Rhino. I really think that they should be the first uh, SmackDown Tag Team Champions. Now a lot of people are probably thinking American Alpha might be the, the team to beat and the team that should win it. But, I mean, what is American Alpha really going to do after they win really their true, the one prize that they can go for right when they debut. And I know Heath Slater and Rhino are a new tag team, but they've obviously been around for a very long time. And Heath Slater's a guy who has given so much that it's time that WWE gives back. So I I really, really want to see Heath Slater and Rhino become tag team champions. And whether that's against the Usos or American Alpha, um, I'm, I'm curious to see how it plays out. So next, AJ Styles. So is AJ Styles going to be the next WWE champion? It's a good question, but I think the guy's on fire. Obviously coming off of SummerSlam with a win against John Cena. And the key thing here is I love how AJ is gloating about this win, call, you know, recalling himself now the face that runs the place. The win mattered. Obviously, a win against John Cena is going to matter no matter what. But to see the follow-through after the win, something that we don't see enough today, is actually... You know, Alberto Del Rio beat John Cena when, uh, when Cena came back for the U.S. title. How much did we honestly hear about that? How, how much did that really... How impactful did, a, did that actually feel? As opposed to now AJ Styles beating John Cena, he's acting like it's the biggest win of his career. It definitely probably is the biggest uh, win of his career if you're talking about in terms of what this is actually doing for AJ Styles. I know he's won plenty of world championships and other promotions, but as far as what this does for your career, what this means, WWE is the big money It's SummerSlam's the second biggest show of the year, and he beats the top guy in WWE, the top company. No question that this is the biggest win in his career. And AJ's just coming in with all the momentum in the world. Uh, Going into Backlash, we have that going on September 11th. And, you know, I gotta say, I, I don't like Dean Ambrose's chances going into Backlash. I think Ambrose has done fine as champion, but to me, it really makes sense to make AJ the next WWE World Champion. And maybe that doesn't happen right away at Backlash. But I think if they want to make a statement with the first ever SmackDown pay-per-view, that AJ should become champion. Um, if not, I really expect, uh, you know, if they're going to end it with some DQ shenanigans, I really hope they don't. Uh, I'm sure it'll carry over. Uh, the feud will continue, I think, until AJ does become champion um, AJ was also great on on Talking Smack this week, even selling, um, you know, he, he landed on the ropes at the end of SmackDown, and in the uh, the the post-match, he continued to uh, get nutted on the ropes, and he was selling that all throughout uh, Talking Smack, saying, you know, he got hit in the Jesus Zipper, which is a, a pretty fun uh, term that I, I actually hadn't heard before. But yeah, AJ Styles, I mean, this guy has been phenomenal. Let's just use the word, and I fully expect him to become the next WWE Champion. So any just last things I'd like to talk about on SmackDown this week? We have just a really weird segment where this guy comes out, the the milkman, uh, whatever, um, and he just starts taking his clothes off and his tidy whities and then Kane comes out and choke slams him. I don't know what the hell that was about. That was really, really weird. They just they come back from commercial and this guy's just ranting. I'm like, what the hell is going on? Kane chokes him. I mean, it's great to see Kane uh, back again. He hasn't really done much since uh, SmackDown has, uh, 
you know, since the brand split has occurred, and then, uh, you know, there's kind of a slight tease here of Baron Corbin and Kane, so something's definitely going to be coming down the pike with that one. And some quick things about the women's division is, you know, I'm liking the Carmella heel turn so far. Definitely needed for her. She continues to just go straight for Nikki Bella. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how this pans out, whether she's going to get a singles feud with Nikki Bella. If uh, Nikki Bella wins the women's championship, um, we'll have to see where that goes. And But Naomi... Uh, now, I'm really digging her entrance, and I think that that's something that can definitely separate herself uh, apart from everyone else. She has, she has an entrance that you can really pop for, and I'm glad she's kind of back to being a babyface. She was kind of playing that heel thing with Team Bad, and it wasn't really working. I think people really want to cheer for Naomi, and that's probably the best spot for her to, uh, to succeed. Uh, anyway, that's kind of my thoughts on this week's SmackDown, another solid show. We got Backlash coming up September 11th, um, so let me know what you guys thought of this week's SmackDown in the comments below, uh, and especially we're talking about AJ Styles is kind of the big thing going into Backlash. Do you think AJ is going to become WWE Champion? Would you rather Dean Ambrose win? Uh, you know, why, why you want to see either one become WWE Championship? Who deserves it most? Let me know in the comments below. We love to hear from you guys. Don't forget to check out some of our other videos, including our recently done WWE Trivia Game Show. I took on Keith while Juan hosted, and if you want to find out who wins that and you want to play along yourself, you should definitely check that video out. Also, the best way to directly support this channel is to head over to patreon.com slash bite that where you can find details on rewards you get for supporting us. You know, every dollar doesn't just support us it gets you something back in return so you can head over there to see the fun perks that you can get so thank you guys for watching i'll see you guys next time